Welcome to this video on using the grid geometry to lay out a user interface. My name's Andy Wiggs and so far we've only used the pack function to put widgets on frames and windows. However, there are two other ways to display widgets, a grid and place geometry. Both can be applied to either frames or the main window, but the grid geometry imagines them as having boxes, similar to a spreadsheet, into which widgets can be placed. You don't have to define how many rows or columns you have, just put something in a box and that creates that box. Any blank rows or columns have a height or width of zero and are therefore ignored. You can put an item across several columns in a row. We'll be creating the quiz frame from the previous video by putting more detail into it using the grid geometry. Let me show you the program running. Here we have the first page of a two-page layout. Let me show you that we have the two pages before I explain the functionality. If I click on the Change button, we go to the Work Submitted form. If we click on the Change button again, we go back to the weekly quizzes. We have two frames. One frame for the weekly quiz scores and the other frame to record the work submitted each week. So let's see what else we can do. Well, you're probably going to score rather well, so I'm going to assume that you have scored 100, 90, 80, 70 and the final one I'm going to leave blank. When I hit calculate it works out that your average score so far across five weeks for these four scores is 68. So you've only got to score a little bit to get a first. Well that's how the program runs but let's see how it was created. As in the previous video, we need to create the root window and then we can do the usual things like changing its settings. We also need to create the quiz frame and the work frame, just as we did in the previous video. But now we want to start using widgets, labels and entry boxes to allow the user to enter the scores for each week. So what we're going to do is we're going to create dictionaries. These dictionaries will be extremely useful. The labels and the entry boxes could be added one at a time. However, where you have a collection of widgets, it's much easier to use a dictionary to hold and display them. That way the contents of these widgets can be added or examined more easily. Here we'll use the week number as the key and the widget as the value. The program can then cycle through the dictionary whenever it wants. We're going to need two dictionaries, one to hold the labels and the other to hold the entry boxes. So we're going to need label dictionary and entry dictionary. Now we can create and add the widgets by using a for loop. We're going to use the range function to generate the numbers between 3 and 7. And as you, I'm sure you remember, we need to make that last item 8 because it always has to be one higher than the highest value we need. We're going to start off by creating a label for the text that's weak. And it's then going to add the weak number from the range function to the end of that. So we're going to end up with week 3, week 4, week 5, week 6 and week 7 as we cycle round the for loop. The next step is to calculate the column in which we want each of the widgets to appear. The weeks start at 3, but as we know everything in computing starts at 0, so we need to deduct 3 from the week number to get the column number. Now we can go about creating the items in the dictionary. So we use the week number as the key for the label dictionary, and we put the label into that. We create the label in exactly the same way as we would normally. We then display what's in that value in the column col and in row 2. I'll come on to sticky equals s in just a moment. But what this is doing is taking the entry in the dictionary and displaying that entry in that column and that row on the screen. The next step is to create and display the entry boxes. Again, we're going to use the dictionary. The key value is going to be the week number again. And then we're going to have an entry box created in exactly the same way as we've created every other widget. Except that now we have to say how wide we want the entry box to be. Now, in your case, I've got to allow for three digits because you're probably going to score over 100 anyway every week. But just for other people, we need to allow lower values as well. Now we can add 
that particular widget, the entry widget that we've just created, into the grid in the column that we've calculated and row 3 with a sticky equals N. Now let me explain about the sticky. The option sticky uses compass bearings to say which edge of the box that it's in the widget should be attached to. And what would be nice is to have the weak number immediately above the entry box to which that weak number applies. So we have the sticky equals south for the label with the weak name in and sticky equals north for the text box. The next step is to add the two buttons at the bottom. The next step is to add the two buttons that appear at the bottom of the, that screen. So we're going to have a button calculate quiz which calculates the average for the quizzes so far and here the command is being set to calculate. We're going to have a function calculate that goes through each of the entry widgets and sees what values they hold. It can then work out the average from there. We're going to place that in the fourth column in the fifth row because everything starts at zero in computing. The the final button that's going on there is the button change to work which allows us to change to the work screen. Here the command is change to work so we need a function change to work which will do the screen swapping as we've had before and this is in the fifth column and fifth row. So now we're all set up. The next and final step is to look at the calculate function. Here we have the calculate function and it starts by setting a total to zero. That's so we can keep track of how your score is doing as we go through each week. We're now going to create a for loop that's going to go around each entry in the entry dictionary. When it finds an entry, it takes whatever the user has typed in from that entry and puts it into temp. So now we know what is or isn't in that text box. But you may not have done all the weeks yet, and so a box may be empty. If you're in week 6, you can't have a week 7 score. Therefore, the entry may not be usable as far as our calculations go. So we have to check whether temp is numeric. If it is numeric, we turn that value into a score, an integer value of score. We then add the score to the running total, plus equals total. And in that way, we can cycle through all the entries and get your total score so far. The final step is to show a message box giving you the information that you wanted, your average score so far. And by doing that, we've got a little application running.